Hello everyone, my name is Anna Samuel and today we're taking a look at the Grid Warp Tracker, which is new to Nuc12 and comparing it to the older Grid Warp node. In this video, we'll demonstrate how the Grid Warp Tracker node allows you to do Grid Warp workflows faster and why it should become your default node for your Grid Warping tasks. Everything you use the Grid Warp node for, you can achieve with the Grid Warp Tracker and it's a faster, easier way to get your work done. As you can see, between the older Grid Warp node and the Grid Warp Tracker, there have been quite a few changes, including a more intuitive UI. You can now add adjustment grids so that you can do secondary animation using your grid without having to perform these operations on top of your tracking animation data. The Grid Warp Tracker features a Smart Vectors input. You can use Smart Vectors within the workflow for the original Grid Warp, but there's no dedicated input so the Grid Warp Tracker allows for a much smoother workflow. You can, of course, still use a regular tracker with the Grid Warp Tracker and still take advantage of the improved UI and adjustment grids. There's also a new Python tab, providing you with even more possibilities. Grid Warps are normally used to add deformations or distortions or perform morphs between multiple different plates. With the older Grid Warp node, we had to go through a lot of 2D tracking or manual keyframing just to make sure the grids would move with our object. On top of this, we would sometimes need to use multiple Grid Warp nodes to have control over any animation and tracking data. Controls over the source and destination grids relied on manual input and duplication of work, copying source and destination grids, and also added filter hits. The Grid Warp Tracker node helps to solve these issues, so let's take a look. So we're just going to show you a really simple effect here, so you can see the similarities and differences between these two nodes. As you can see, we have this nice footage of this lady, except she's looking perhaps a little emotionless, so let's try and see if we can make her smile. First, let's make our grid. Next, we can start adjusting the points to create our custom grid, and then use the link button to link our from and to grids so they're the same, including any animation. This is a new feature for the Grid Warp Tracker. Once we have all our points in place, we can start tracking using Smart Vectors or the regular tracker node. This reduces the time needed to get a good track and improves the quality of the match move of your grids to your objects. You can then disconnect the Smart Vectors input once you have your track. All of the tracking information is stored within the Grid Warp Tracker. Now that we're done tracking, it's time to utilise another new feature of the Grid Warp Tracker and add a new adjustment grid. This allows you to perform your warps and secondary animation on a new grid without overwriting your existing tracking animation. You can also make multiple adjustment grids and copy and paste keyframes using the buttons in the Grid Warp Tracker properties panel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing the best parts of the Grid Warp Tracker node and how it can streamline your warping workflows. Happy comping!